The final tutorial for the first week is going to be a quick look at functions. So if you remember our example with Yoda, uh, remember that in R we have um, two main components to the language. We have the objects, which are sort of like nouns, and then we have the functions that are sort of like verbs. And in English, uh, we often tend to put our verbs sort of in the middle of sentences. And so typically a, a noun um, will perform an action, will perform some sort of verb. For example, Yoda will levitate his X-wing fighter. On the other hand, R uses a somewhat different syntax in which the function or the verb-like uh, term is put at the beginning and then it acts upon different nouns or different objects um, that go to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this um, function, we're going to take a look at the general structures of functions and to see how we can tell them what objects um, they should act upon. Alright, so the main idea behind a function is that it, it is a named set of commands that performs a certain task. And the task might be relatively straightforward. Uh, a function could simply add a number one to uh, a vector. It might be incredibly complicated. In fact, it might perform statistical analyses such as analyses of variance and so on. But it's a, simply a named set of commands that performs uh, one or more tasks. So as we think about the general form of a function, right, we have a function name, and that's the, the action. Right? Then we give this function certain arguments or certain objects to act upon. And the arguments have names. So um, there's the first argument, there's the second argument, there's the third, there's the nth argument, etc. Right? However many arguments there are, um, the arguments also um, can, uh, or in some cases should, have an object that goes with that particular argument. So to think about this with our, our Yoda example again, uh, levitate would be the function, would be the action, right? But then we might have a couple of arguments for levitate. So the first argument might be the what argument. What is getting a levitated? Ah, the object is an X-wing fighter. Another argument might be the who argument. Who is doing the, the levitation? Ah, that would be Yoda. All right. So hopefully this sort of helps understand the gen you understand the general uh, structure of a function and how we give objects to arguments. So let's take an example, uh, a look at an actual example, um, and that's the function mean, which we've already dabbled with a little bit. So the key over here is to note both the argument names and the argument orders. And so there are several ways, good ways, that we could use the mean function. So in our first example over here, the first um, argument that mean takes is the argument x. x is actually the name. All right? And it's a, a vector of data, so we're going to give it a vector of data. In this case, we're going to give it the column diameter from the data frame, frame 1, which if you remember we created in our previous tutorial. Another argument that mean can take is uh, an argument about whether to remove missing values. So the name of the argument is na.rm, and if we give it the value true, right, then it will remove any missing values as it computes the mean. All right? So in this case, um, the names of the arguments are given, and the names are also in their correct order, x before na.rm. Now, it turns out that we can switch things around a little bit, but within certain parameters. So, the order doesn't matter as long as the arguments are named. So we could write na.rm equals true, comma, x equals frame one string diameter, um, because we have named each of the arguments. So if the arguments are named, the order doesn't matter. It also turns out that the name doesn't matter if the order is correct. So for example, let's just give it one value, frame 1 the, and the diameter column. That is going to be our, our x data. And so if our first argument is x and we give it a good value for x, then the mean function is happy. However, here's a, a bad way to write the mean function. This won't work. If we give the wrong order, 
and we don't use argument names, then the function isn't going to behave the way it should. In fact, it'll probably usually give us some sort of error message. So, um, as a general rule, um, it's often good to name the arguments, or at the very least to keep the arguments in their correct order if you choose to use a shortcut like this third uh, example here and not give the names. All right. Here's one other example of uh, a function, and this function is going to be the t-test function. Oops, and that should actually be t.test function. Um, so this is an interesting example because um, the arguments uh, used by t-test are a bit more complex. Specifically, the arguments can actually be a formula. So the idea behind the t-test function is the first argument is a formula, and that formula indicates the variable that is going to be um, the dependent variable and a little tilde over here followed by the variable that's going to be the independent variable. So if we want to know whether there's a difference in the diameter based on the predation, all right, we'd write it diameter formula equals diameter tilde predation. Now you notice that we haven't used um, our notation of um, data frame name then dollar sign column, and that's because we have the data frame specified over here in our second argument. So our second argument is the data argument. Where is the data frame with the columns? And it turns out that we told it the data frame with the columns is frame 1. So this is an example of a slightly more comp uh, function that takes slightly more complex arguments. Okay. Um, the second the key thing to recognize about functions is that they have output. Right? If a function is an action, then it's going to give some sort of output, and that output is very often going to be an object. So, if we compute a mean, for example, the mean of this diameter column, the output is going to be the mean. So, we can just display the mean if we want to, or we can store it as um, its own uh, vector, right? in this case, mean diameter. So, let's see how that would work. All right, so this is going to be tutorial oops, five. And uh, let's first of all just use the mean function by itself without storing the value. So mean, right, and we're going to give it um, the column frame one dollar sign diameter. And just to be good, let's tell it to remove any missing values it finds, although it shouldn't find any. And so when we run this line of code, notice we get an output. The mean is 19.23. Okay, so let's suppose we want to capture that mean so we can use it later on. We could create uh, a variable. Um, oops. Oops. Mean diam over here. All right. And then use our function mean one diameter comma a m equals true. All right. Now when we run this, notice that we don't get the mean as an output. However, what we did is we created over here a uh, vector with one value, which is the mean, and that mean of course is 19.233, etc. Repeating. So that's how you could use um, a mean to either give you an output or to store the output as another type of object. Finally, the last thing I want to mention in terms of functions is a, a very, very important uh, problem when you are using new functions, and that is you need to know what arguments uh, a new function has. And there are a few ways of figuring out what the arguments are. So for, I think, just about every function that we have used in this course, I have included it in the lab manual appendix. So um, somewhere is my lab manual appendix. Here it is. So this is uh, currently labeled uh, numbered appendix four in the lab manual, and it has all of the R functions that we've used. So it starts with arithmetic and large logical operators, uh, functions for creating objects such as the C uh, combined function, um, the rep function for repeating things, 
lists data frames for creating data frames in different ways, the read.csv function, etc. There are also a lot of data selection and editing tools, we'll get to those later, and so on. So this is one way that you can find uh, lists of arguments for the functions that should be uh, important in the lab manual. Another way that you can do it is you can go over here on your lower right hand window, remember our little help topic over here? And so when you enter a help topic like t-test, then what it does is it will give you um, different arguments that can be used and explain what each of these arguments is. So the x argument is a numeric vector of uh, data values. y could be an optional, right? So you could use this argument or not, um, secondary vector of data values, and so on, right? So you can specify a mu if you want to. You can uh, indicate whether there's equal variance or not, and so on. And so the key is that you need uh, an x over here, or you need some kind of formula, right? But um, a lot of these other uh, arguments are have default values. So for example, the paired default value is false, the variance equal default value is false, the confidence level default value is 0.95, and so on. So this is a, a way that you can see what arguments a function can take. For the practice over here, calculate the mean height <coughs> excuse me, of the values 1.6, 2.5, and 3.2. And what we want to do is we want to use the mean function. So think in particular about how we need to input the values to the mean function. All right, I'll let you consider this for a few minutes, and then we'll go over some possibilities. OK. There are a few ways that we could do this. Um, one way, the longer way, might be to write our mean function. Then we put in uh, a vector of values with um, 1.6, uh, 2.5, and 3.2. So notice we've created a vector within the mean function over here. And then, just to be on the safe side, I'll tell it to remove any missing values, but there shouldn't be any. So we can run it, and this will work. This will give us a mean 2.43. But notice that that involves a little bit of extra typing. So here might be a slightly faster way to do it. If you recall, um, the values 1.6, 2.5, and 3.2 are height values for um, in, uh, in the column data frame 1. So there we go. So we can simply say frame 1, dollar sign height, so now we specified a vector with the values. All right. And if we run that, we should get the same value. All right. So that's a different way to uh, put an input data into the mean function, and one that tends to be uh, a lot simpler than actually retyping everything. So here are the key uh, skills for using functions. First, understand what uh, a function is and what its arguments are. Right? Understand uh, how to order and name the arguments within a function, and how you'd figure out what the names and orders are. Um, in general, be able to use functions with arguments. We saw a few examples, but we're going to be using functions repeatedly, so understand generally how we use functions. Um, and finally, uh, be able to, using the lab manual with the help feature, identify the arguments needed by a particular function. This is the last uh, tutorial for uh, the first week of the class, so hopefully these were some helpful tutorials. Let me know if you have any suggestions uh, for next week's tutorials. And uh, thank you very much for all of your work.